old student was attacked by high grade fever with sore throat consulted his general practitioner who prescribed medications the child was told by the working mother to take rest and use the medications accordingly he developed paleness and became severe drowsy after 3 days mother consulted the tertiary care on examination the temperature was 102 degree fahrenheit pulse was 122 per minute pp was 80 by 55 Dehydration was positive. Anemia was positive. Jaundice was positive. Liver four centimeter palpable and tender. The Glasgow Glasgow Coma Scale is eleven by fifteen. Means he is very drowsy. Hemoglobin is eleven gram, which is lower down. TLC is twelve thousand, which is higher. Platelet is five lakh sixty thousand, which is higher. The total bilirubin was 2.9, definitely higher. Direct is 1.7. If you minus it, it is one. It is point or 1.2 is indirect. It is mixed type of uh, uh, picture is seen here. But predominant is direct hyperbilirubinemia. The ALT is 212, which is higher. AST is 267, which is higher. Gamma GT is 120, again is higher. Alkaline phosphate is 1100. In children of this age, 800-700 alkaline phosphate is normal because they are growing children. 1100 is higher. A PTINR, which is the most sensitive indicator of the acute liver injury, is 1.9. It indicates the injury is acute. The random blood sugar is 50. Hypoglycemia is there. Sodium is 129. Hyperatremia. Potassium is 3.2 hypokalemia. Chloride is 99 because of probability vomiting is there. The bicarbonate is 30. It is higher. It means it is metabolic alkalosis probably. It is compensated type because pH is not given here. Now questions are what is the differential diagnosis and what are other investigations are needed. What is the most probable diagnosis, and what are your lines of management? Now, my diagnosis in this case is related with the drugs. Number one, it is drug induced hepatitis, which is leading to the severe severity of the problem. Number two, it may be a viral hepatitis, which causes which is causing the problem. And it leads to very severe injury to the liver. That is acute liver injury, or acute permanent hepatitis. This is the two di- basic differential diagnosis with me. Otherwise, the there are other causes as well. But is in this group, the most important one is the poisoning. The poisoning in this age group is very common, so it may be associated with the paracetamol poisoning. The, because the mother was working mother, she has she hasn't uh, washed the children, the child to take the drug properly, and the child had taken the medi- medications because of the body ache or because of the fever, more doses of acetaminophen, that is paracet- paracetamol. Probably this is the cause. The other one is the acute viral hepatitis is maybe leading very. Quickly to the uh, acute permanent hepatitis. The other investigations are needed. Yes, of course, I need it. I need it. I need the the ultrasound of the liver. I need the X-ray chest. The other routine investigation as well. I need this. And uh, the most probable diagnosis in this case is the. Drug-induced type of hepatitis leading to the permanent hepatitis. The lines of management accordingly, because it is paracetamol poisoning is there, we have to use the uh, recommendation uh, for the paracet paracetamol poisoning. What is permanent hepatic failure? The rapid development of the severe acute liver injury with impaired function and encephalopathy because the brain functions are depressed. 
इन प्रीवियसली नॉर्मल लिवर और वेल कंपनसेटेड लिवर डिजीज इधर नॉर्मल लिवर और कंपनसेटेड लिवर डिजीज वॉज देयर बट इज कंपनसेटेड नाउ इट बिकम अनकम्पनसेटेड and the patient become drowsy and leading to a the most important target organ of from from this disease is is brain the brain functions are deteriorated depressed this is the hallmark of this disease the encephalopathy within within the eight weeks previously had the liver it is the subacute type subacute type of the encephalopathy uh, encephal or subacute type of the uh, fulminant hepatitis and the encephalopathy which occurs two weeks after developing the jaundice with the previously underlying liver dysfunction it is acute fulminant type of hepatitis the sub fulminant hepatitis hepatic hepatic failure is more than 8 weeks to 6 months and the sub the the permanent hepatitis versus sub uh, permanent hepatitis is there the the difference is the duration first the duration is more than you know 6 weeks to 8 weeks in sub acute it is less than 6 weeks in permanent hepatitis The other difference is that the cellular edema is common in permanent hepatitis, and is rare in sub-permanent uh, hepatitis, hepatic, uh, hepatic failure. But on the other hand, the renal failure and the portal hypertension are more frequently seen with the sub-acute type of the permanent hepatic failure. Hepatic encephalopathy is the result of the acute liver injury. reverse altered mental and neuromotor function associated acute or chronic liver, liver disease will is there on this there is destruction of the liver very badly and leads to the all functions are depressed the liver is a very very unique organ in this this is weight is 1.5 kg according to my teacher who taught me in 19 77 he said that if 1.2 kg is lost even the liver can regenerate it means only the 3 kg 1.5 kg 1.5 kg and 1.2 kg is lost in 90% liver is damaged if there are chances of recovery or regeneration there are chances because it is very very quickly regenerated it is a very unique organ it will it will be compensated very very quickly the physiology is this the liver is deranged because the function is not there its metabolic functions are completely deranged every carbohydrate protein the fats everything so the proteins which are catabolizing and releasing the ammonia which should be converted into uric acid afterwards and creatinine it will not become it, it is it is it is not going on the on the this path rather than on the other path the ammonia is liberated and it goes into the brain it crosses the brain and it will depress the brain functions this is the pathophysiology basic of this disease but it comes very very quickly it is seen in very quickly very short time but the other uh, 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 toxins are also claimed other than the ammonia for example marcaptans and the other proteinated uh, by products the endogenous benzodiazepines etcetera etcetera these are the other there are other theories are as well the most acceptable theory is ammonia which crosses the blood brain barrier and it depress all the functions of the brain this is the most acceptable theory 
the etiology is in the case of the children because it is the disease mostly seen acute pulmonary failure hepatic failure is seen in the children is infectious immunological it is metabolic it may be toxin or drug related from all of this the drug related is most important the etiology in the pediatric acute liver failure is identified in approximately 55% of cases and it is indeterminate cause in 45% the indeterminate cases are likely composed of the number of the separate conditions including immune dysregulation with a little condition having a variety of manifestation there are lot of diseases which come under this under this heading which will be told by which will be taught to you by the pediatrician when he will uh, give lecture on this idiopathic form of the fulminant hepatic failure is seen about 40 to 50 percent of cases in children in men actually the, the etiology was not known viral hepatitis all viruses are dangerous hepatitis a virus b c d e o j b what if the liver is badly damaged it will cause the acute permanent hepatic failure because in children hepatitis a virus is most important but in the, in the adult hepatitis e virus can cause b c d they can all cause the permanent hepatic failure autoimmune hepatitis is 5% of cases high alcohol intake can cause damage to the liver it can also be toxins drugs chemicals hepatic ischemia hypoxia acute extensive infiltration of the hepatocyte with the micro droplets of fat and hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis that is hepatic steatosis that is called fatty liver infiltration it may be non alcoholic fatty liver disease it may be actually the hepatic steatitis inflammation with the uh, infiltration of the fat i have seen these cases the metabolic disorders any metabolic disorder with severe in intensity can cause this disease and hepatotoxic herbal or the dietary supplements which were taken by the patients without realizing ke what are the contents of the uh, in 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 the herbal medicine or in the dietary supplements the signs and symptoms are the same that the acute in the acute liver failure the non specific symptoms the patient is very very irritable he melays there will be nausea jaundice acidosis and and all any features of the uh, you can say the chronic liver disease may be present spider angioma spidel edema ascites you can have the uh, the uh, sacral edema and uh, you can have the finger clubbing the palmar edema etc etc now in the packet in globulopathy this is the most important target organ which is involved in this disease age is between 10 to 60 years and what happened in this the handwriting and the hand coordination deteriorate in the stages 1 and in stage 2 in stage 2 acidosis is prominent that is the flapping tremors reflex is symmetrically hyperactive in stage 3 and maintain in neurological signs change rapidly over 6 to 12 hours now these are the stages of hepatic encephalopathy which i already mentioned out in my previous lecture if the age is more than 60 the signs of underlying liver disease diminish liver is very small elt become very low confusion more prominent the precipitating gastrointestinal hemorrhage or infection less often identified They remain in the stage 1 or 2 for many days and and the diagnosis is delayed progression is slow is very slow so it becomes sub acute type in even less than 10 it is the acute type of the fulminant hepatic failure signs of the underlying liver disease prominent here or extremely advanced cirrhosis you will find the leading to the fulminant hepatic failure 
The progression through the stage is very rapid in this condition. After 6 to 12 hours, the patient becomes unconscious. Wilson's disease or hepatolenticular degeneration can imitate the hepatic encephalopathy. Wilson's disease, if it is very severe, it can itself cause the permanent hepatic hepatitis. The complications are hepatic encephalopathy, cerebral edema, sepsis, renal failure, circulatory dysfunction, coagulopathy, gastrointestinal bleeding, pulmonary complications, metabolic disturbances, metabolic acidosis, chaisa de hair, it is compensated, hypoglycemia, which I have mentioned here, hypophosphatemia, and other than that also. The lab investigation, the CBC coagulation profile should be done, biochemistry, blood gas, gases should be done, and the blood glucose, blood urea, nitrogen, creatinine, electrolytes, LFTs, blood gas, gases should be done, virological markers from A to E, all should be done, microbiology, hemoculture, sputum, urine culture, and EEG will tell you the stage also. So EEG, EEG will disturb in stage 2 to 3 of hepatic incubalopathy. The treatment is the specific treatment should be given. If it is acetaminophen, go for the acetaminophen uh, protocol. Otherwise, in stage 3 and 4 of hepatic encephalopathy, liver transplantation should be done. The complication should be treated for the hepatic encephalopathy or cerebral edema, sepsis, renal failure, circulatory dysfunction, coagulopathy, gastrointestinal bleeding, pulmonary complication, and metabolic disturbance. Now, admit this patient in ICU and go for the ICU measures and treat like this. The ammonia is increased, you know that. The concept is the ammonia from the gut, lumen, the bacteria which are which are definitely uh, they are uh, destroying uh, from apoptosis and uh, they are releasing the ammonia. The person is taking the food which is converted into the ammonia, etc. etc. To so restrict the protein diet to 40 to 70 grams per day. Non absorbable disaccharide lactulose should be in the acid. The lactulose, if you give, it will convert into lactic acid. And lactic acid will release hydrogen. And hydrogen will combine with the ammonia. Ammonia will combine with the hydrogen to form ammonium NH4, which is not absorbed. It will act as a osmotic purgative. Lactulose will, will also act as the adsorbent of the toxins. Antibiotics should be given to reduce the bacterial uh, you know, uh, proliferation in the intestine. Rifaximine is a very good drug, new drug, very nice. Neumycin was given at one time, but it is a, a renal toxicity, now it is discarded. Metronidazole can be used, ciprofloxacin should be, can be used, vancomycin uh, should be used to reduce the bacterial proliferation. The first line is the lactulase should be given, 50% lactulose syrup, 30 to 60 ml, so that bowel movements occur daily, lactulose enema can be given. If the worsening or no improvement in two days, they add antibiotics, the adoxamine or I will not say the neomycin, but metronidazole or vancomycin plus ciprofloxacin etc. should be given. And acids are needed if it, if it is, you can give. And flumazenil is a very, very, you know, Tricky type of a drug. It is a weird drug. But it's a bando that the benzapine and benzapine antagonist. They said that the endogenous benzodiazepines may be the culprit of the uh, cerebral uh, dysfunction. So flumanizil uh, can be tried in this condition. Complications: cerebral edema should be treated because of the astrocyte edema and the intracranial pressure. And the brain is time herniation, most common cause of death in, in these conditions. Increased intracranial pressure include the cushion sprite you will find and the neurological manifestation, the hypertonic, hyperreflexia, and altered pupillary responses will be seen in this case. The cushion trial is nothing but you know that if it's higher pressure you give. And it will 
it will cause more ACTH to release, more ACTH, more aldosterone, and more aldosterone and more steroids will cause the condition to worse. Now, the ICP should be controlled and uh, of the, for, for the cerebral edema is concerned, elevate the head position, prevent overhydration. If the ICP intracranial pressure is more than hyperventilation, therapy should be considered and PCOD is, should be lowered down if no response is used. And hyperosmotic agent like mannitol 0.5 to 1 milligram per program can be given. If no response, then use the pheno, the uh, pantobarbitone 3 to 5 milligram per program body weight intravenously. It will help in the management of the cerebral dysfunctions. Prognosis of the liver transplantation occurs in grade two, 2 or 3, definitely. In the grade 2.1, it is encephalopathy, 50% of chances of recovery is there. Grade 1 to 2, recovery 65 to 70%, grade 3, 40 to 50%, grade 4, less than 20. And age is the factor. If less than age 10 or 15, and the prognosis is good. If it is more than 60 years, 70 years, the prognosis is bad. And those who have got acetaminophen reducing reaction, there's acetaminophen, you should give the acetaminophen poisoning management. It should be, it be taken as a poisoning. So the idiosyncratic drug reaction and worsen disease, the cause this, this uh, fulminant hepatic failure in in children, specifically speaking.